Hey guys, thanks for watching. A friend of mine gave me this iMac 27 inch uh, from 2011. Uh, it was a pretty nice machine, but it was diagnosed with a bad video card. And uh, he wanted a new machine with all the latest, greatest bells and whistles. So he took that uh, as a good time to buy a new one. So he gave it to me and uh, I told him I'd just play with it and see if I could fix it. So I took a look at it. Some of the symptoms were uh, kind of strange. Um, the system would boot up, uh, but, would, but it would just stay on the gray Apple screen. It wouldn't go past that. Um, so I decided uh, maybe it's a driver problem or something like that. So I booted it on Linux. That did work. And I uh, booted on Windows as well, and that worked. I was able to uh, actually install Windows um, 2010 and uh, it worked fine for a little bit. Um, now, for some reason, um, it worked for a while, quit working. I played with it a little bit longer. Um, I was able to get you know basic uh, command line type stuff to work on it, uh, but nothing else would. Um, so that kind of led me to believe that there was something else going on <clears throat> uh, with the machine. So. Uh, I did a little research. Uh, it sounds like this is a fairly common problem with this particular model of machine. Uh, and it all does come down to the video graphics card. So anyways, after uh, diagnosing a little bit longer, I concluded that the original diagnosis was correct. So let's talk about the teardown. Uh, it's pretty easy to work on this machine. Uh, overall, if this is your first PC to work on, it might be a little more intimidating, but uh, if you've worked on PCs before, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I am not a Mac guy. I've always worked on uh, Windows-based PCs in the past, um, so this was a little bit new to me, especially on the troubleshooting side. So to start off, um, this glass panel comes off the front and it just pulls forward it's mag it's connected with magnets to the screen itself um, so you pull that and put it aside make sure it's in a safe place um, then if you take a look uh, along the bezel here uh, all around the edge there's screws that you'll need to take out out um, to pull that actual screen away you don't need to take the screws that hold in the antennas on each side, so go ahead and leave those in, um, or they'll just sit there and dangle. Um, so with that note, moving along, once you uh, open up the case, um, there's going to be a couple of connectors on, on this board that you need to disconnect. It's a little bit hard to see there, uh, but they're there. Um, not terribly difficult to do and then you've got a third connector right here that you're looking at and it connects a little farther down on that system board um, that one's got a little pull tab that you want to pull out and then just pull the cable up it shouldn't be difficult to uh, get out at all um, okay so that gets the screen away from the uh, body of the Mac uh, so at that point, you can see the system board. You've got the main processor right here. You've got your video coprocessor here with its heat sink. Uh, and then the main system board right here. Uh, yes, there are quite a few screws that hold this in, but it's not too terrible. Uh, so if you take your time, you'll be fine. Um, there's a couple, let's see, screw there, screw there, and then around the perimeter of that uh, board. Um, there's also quite a few uh, connectors, but there's nothing that you can confuse with one another. So in other words, as long as you make sure you have all the connectors disconnected, you'll be able to go through and uh, reconnect uh, the connectors without worrying about connecting the wrong one. All right, so a little bit closer look here. You don't need to, uh, you don't want to try to separate these um, heat sinks from the system board. You'll be pulling those out with the system board. Um, so go ahead and leave those in place. Uh, you will find uh, connectors here, 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 here. Uh, so again, there's quite a few here. There's three here. And then there's, I think there's four or five down in that location. Uh, you've got a couple over here. 
I believe, let's see what else. I think that's about it. So, you know, just take your time, take a good look at the board and it's no big deal. Oh, here we had a couple more in the middle uh, of that board. Let's go back to oh, <laughs> the wrong way, um, right in the middle. So <clears throat> just take your time, you'll be fine. Um, and uh, that's it for the connectors and the screws. So um, this is what it looks like once you pull that uh, assembly away from the backing assembly. Um, one note I'll make is there's a sensor here that goes down in front of the Apple insignia on the front. Uh, and you'll want to take a little bit of time to pull that out correctly. Um, I ended up uh, pulling it out. It was fine, but just take a uh, little care on doing that. Then you'll be able to take this whole assembly out um, with the heat sinks and everything. Okay, so I used some aluminum for static suppression. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's what I did. Um, again, I'm not a Mac Pro, but uh, I thought that was better than nothing. So anyways, this is what it looks like with the heat sinks um, all attached and the system board out. All right. All right, so the next thing to do is to get that video adapter separated from the system board. There's a connector over here on this side. Um, you'll be or unscrewing these four uh, screws here to disconnect it from uh, the frame and the system board. Um, so, uh, oh no, I said that wrong. Uh, actually, they're down on the video adapter. Uh, there's four little uh, screw holes, if you can see it. I don't know, it's pretty small there. At any rate, uh, those larger screws hold the heat sink to the video adapter, and I'll show you here in a second. Um, all right, so here are the, the, the holes that those screws went through to hold the video adapter against the heat sink. All right, if you take a look here, um, there's a little piece of uh, foamy stuff that you're going to want to take off to do the repair on this uh, because you're going to be baking this at about 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, something I noticed when I pulled this apart is that there is a lot of space on this chip that is not covered with heat sink grease. So um, I suspect the problem kind of arose from the lack of connecting the the chip the video chip with the heatsink itself uh, and if you take a look at you know some of these other chips the the heatsink grease coverage is not that great um, so maybe during the manufacturing process there was a little bit a bit of a little bit of a problem there so all right, moving on. So I cleaned off all the heat sink grease from all the chips here, here, and here uh, before I bake this. Um, I also removed this uh, spider web from the back. That's just to hold, again, that's the, to hold the heat sink and the uh, board together or clamping them together. So anyways, I baked this entire board here at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Um, that wasn't scientific. That just seemed like a, a good time for uh, to let that solder inside the chip mechanism to melt and rebond itself. <clears throat> so that's what I did. So 400 degrees Fahrenheit at 15 minutes in my uh, in my oven. All right. So I've got regular old heat sink grease. Um, it's just silicon based heat sink grease. It seemed like that's what they had used in uh, in the past, so that's what I decided to uh, do this time. I put it both on the chip side and the heat sink side, and I did it not just for the main video chip, but all these memory chips as well. Um, I'm assuming that's what those are, our memory chips. Uh, I added heat sink compound to all these, uh, including these over here, um, and uh, that seemed to work pretty well. So anyways, I clamped that, clamped that back together with the uh, screws that um, were on the heat sink. <clears throat> uh, put it back, put the machine back together in the, in the reverse order. Uh, seemed to work pretty well. So anyways, just a word of warning uh, if you're doing this. If for some reason <laughs> you take 
this panel off, uh, take the video panel off, and then put it back on uh, without screwing any of those screws that hold the panel in. Um, that's probably going to fall out as soon as you put it <laughs> back in the machine because this machine will tilt forward and then the the panel just falls right out. I learned that the hard way. Fortunately, the LCD panel didn't break. It was just the front glass. And this is what it ends up looking like. So just a word of warning on that. Uh, make sure you have screws in your LCD panel, at least one screw just to hold it in place if you uh, you know walk away and do something else or, or what have you during this process. Um, so anyways, it's been working for four weeks now. So I'm calling it fixed. Uh, it was definitely worth the time. Uh, applications run really fast on this machine, even though it's uh, as old as, as it is. And um, I've been very pleased with it. So good luck, and I hope that helped.